All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. Remembering the legendary guitarist for Ario Speedwagon, the late, great Gary Richrath. Uh, Gary passed away, I think, in 2015. Uh, only 65 years old, lived a hard life, struggled with alcohol for many years, uh, was forgotten about to some degree when he and Kevin Cronin parted ways, oh, I would say 1989, because Dave Amato uh, was their new guitarist, and he showed up in 1990. Dave Amato, a decent guitarist. Um, Gary Richrath, a legendary, even better guitarist, um, who pretty much pioneered his own sound. He had a Midwestern bluesy barroom boogie style. Uh, his guitar solos were absolutely epic. He was a guitar hero, according to Kevin Cronin, who eulogized him to some degree later on after he had passed away. The band did do a benefit concert together in 2013, uh, reuniting Kevin Cronin and Gary Richrath. But for many, many years, um, Gary was kind of under the radar and people had forgotten about him. Uh, he's a really important, Gary Richrath is a really important figure in the modern era for a number of reasons. Number one on that list is the fact that Kevin Cronin was always trying to write these folky sort of pop ballads and the creative tension between Cronin and Richrath eventually resulted in, I think, one of the more important songs ever recorded, and that's Keep On Loving You. Not because of the lyrics, not necessarily because the song went to number one for the band, which of course was a huge feat back in 1980, but I believe that song is the first legitimate power ballad ever written with some apologies to Nazareth like um, and a couple of other groups. Love Hurts, I think, is really close as well. But this had this wall of sound guitar and it was done on purpose because Gary was essentially protesting what Kevin was trying to do. Kevin was trying to do another Time For Me To Fly something kind of light and airy and Gary was having none of it and said, no, if you're going to put this out there, I'm going to just tag this with some real, you know, cranked up distorted guitar. And it worked. It worked like a charm because when that thing came on the radio, in addition to the great production value, the song had it, you knew this was something different. This was something that hadn't been done to this degree before. It was a soft rock song on steroids. And it's funny, even today, when you hear it on the soft rock stations, it's like, okay, too much guitar, and I love it. And everybody who grew up and lived through it, they thought that song was the bomb. And Ario never could write another song that sounded like that because, again, they changed producers, the 80s came around, uh, in more depth in the mid 80s, things had changed production wise. Um, can't fight this feeling. You can't um, discount how amazing that song is, but is it's a much mellower song and doesn't feature as much tension. So you can see maybe why Gary Richrath down the road got frustrated um, because Ario's sound was kind of hijacked completely from their uh, 70s period where they were doing a lot of Chuck Berry blues type things combined with that uh, Midwestern style. But Gary Richrath was really important to this group. Um, his guitar soloing uh, just is legendary, even on Take It on the Run. That is just such a great guitar solo. And again, that's Gary's song from start to finish and probably one of the best REO songs ever. Um, for REO fans, um, the Flying Turkey Trot is always fun. Um, that's Gary doing his thing, and uh, it's a great piece of 
music that uh, stands up even today. One of my other favorite um, Gary Richrath songs is Meet Me on the Mountain from the Nine Lives album, which didn't do all that well for REO. It was kind of a limbo album. Um, songwriting wasn't quite as good as what would come later, but Meet Me on the Mountain is just this amazing Gary Richrath tune. And again, guitar work galore. And all of those 70s albums the band put out, including those live albums, which just really showcase how good Gary Richrath was as a guitarist, because his live performances were just off the hook and legendary. So he doesn't get uh, as much acclaim. He doesn't get as much ink as so many other people. I mean, Gary Richrath, I mean, he was on the launch pad with REO Speedwagon, and that rocket went off the launch pad, and he was there throughout the most important parts of that journey. Obviously, after he was replaced, the band had one brief stint in 1990 where they were still on rock stations a little bit, but the 90s came along, and without Gary Richrath, there was no push to get that band out to the radio anymore. I think the record label at that point dropped the band. Um, they still put on great live shows. Even now, they're still a formidable live band, but they're not the same without Gary Richrath, and uh, he is definitely missed, and uh, people should pay attention and go back in time and listen to some things like, I don't know, uh, throw the chains away might be one of those songs you might want to listen to or uh, down by the dam that's another great Gary Richrath moment um, if he wasn't writing the songs he was putting his classic guitar licks into those songs and um, they stand up well he was a fine guitarist and he is definitely missed all right, that is my video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the bell for notifications and you can join me on Patreon for just a dollar a month to support this channel. I do appreciate that support because uh, during the year, revenue will ebb and flow. We'll reach the end of the month and we'll lose a few, we'll gain a few, but I'm always uh, looking to build up my uh, supply of patrons. So if you can join, that would be terrific. And we can have conversations over there on Patreon. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.